Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Child and Youth Care Program Information Session. This is C133 for the full-time three-year program in Child and Youth Care. My name is Christine Yap. I go by she and her are my pronouns. I am a full-time faculty uh, here at George Brown College in the Child and Youth Care Program, and I am one of um, seven full-time faculty. And we have a small pool of part-time uh, professors as well who are working directly in the field, who have a wealth of knowledge that they bring to the teaching in this program. Um, so you are um, in good hands when it comes to the faculty that will be training you in this, uh, in this career. I just would like to go through our agenda today. We have the territorial acknowledgement that I will go through. Uh, why choose CYC program, the CYC program? And what is a child and youth, youth care practitioner? Uh, what do we do? Um, who are the, the young people that we work with? I will talk about the program overview. I will take a little look at the uh, field education. We will go through the coursework. I'll navigate some of that student supports for you that are on campus and online. We'll discuss the admission requirements and I'll provide you with some contact information for the coordinators of our program. Okay. So the territorial and treaty acknowledgement George Brown College is situated on the sovereign indigenous territory of Haudenosaunee Confederacy. The Anishinaabe peoples and the Wendant and the, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We are all treaty people accountable to the Dish and One Spoon, Two Row Wampum Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty. By doing this acknowledgement, George Brown and the CYC program uh, like to um, take the small step of acknowledging and reconciling around the injustices that have taken place in, in the Indigenous communities. This is why we always um, do an acknowledgement at the beginning of our programs or our classes. I want to get into why do we choose CYC as a profession? And so some of the questions I'd like to kind of um, pose to people or to think about, um, I'll read them out for you. Do you have an innate desire to help people? Uh, do you care about the well-being of other people? Um, do you enjoy work with, working with children and adolescents? And if you think about that, what age groups do you like to work with as well? And do you enjoy spending time with other people? Do you like listening to people's challenges? Are you a problem solver? Um, are you able to see the good qualities in other people? Do you see their strengths? Do you acknowledge people's strengths in their individuality? Can you support others in overcoming some of their challenges? And are you able to lend your voice to advocate for other people? Um, do you have, or are you impartial or non-judgmental? Are you open-minded? Um, and are you able to hang in with young people when they are dealing and going through seriously tough times? And do you enjoy working in a multidisciplinary team? If your answer to these questions are yes, then I think CYC might be a really important profession for you to look into and consider. Um, and we'll go through what we do. So we always get a question in this program is what's the difference between what you do as a CYC practitioner and what do you do, what do social workers do or what do early childhood, um, childhood educators do differently? So we've kind of compiled this here for you to really get an understanding of where the focus is for CYC practitioners in comparison to our sister um, health services. Right. So when we look at early childhood education, we're looking really at the focus being on education and development of very, very young children. When we say very young children, we're talking about infancy all the way up to six or seven or eight years old. And depending on their developmental levels, we may even look at kids up to the age of 12. So ECEs, uh, CYC practitioners rarely, if ever, are working with this age group, um, do, working in education and development with very young children. CYC practitioners 
typically start working with children at the age of six years old. Okay. We have social service workers, one of our sister programs, uh, who also their focus can be at from anywhere from young people, young adults to adulthood. And when we speak about adulthood, people in social service worker programs can technically work with elderly as well, those who are in geriatric sports as well. They have a focus on social oppression and they specifically may focus on specific settings uh, that are either government or non-government services. They focus on things like advocacy programming, case management, things like shelters, um, mental health and addictions. Um, the difference between uh, social service and child and youth care is when we are working with the adults of um, our young people, they are a bit of a separate entity and not considered to be our direct client. So there's a difference between the way we work in child and youth care in comparison to social service work. A CYC practitioner has specific interventions in working with children and youth who are experiencing a serious level of social emotional development um, or behavioral challenges that they might be contending with. Typically, we as CYC practitioners are working with a level of risk in a child or a youth that have um, come across through our agencies and our programs. The other thing that CYC practitioners do is that we work within the life space of that young person. So whether we are doing individual work, family work, school work, community work, we are working within their life space. What does that mean? That simply means that where they're living and growing every single day, we are a piece of as CYC practitioners in our professional world. We will go into the family home we will work with the child at their school. We will work with children in the community. We will work with children in group homes and hospitals um, settings, in, in youth justice settings. We have these varying um, sectors that we work within, and we will work directly with the child in the space that they are living in, growing in, educating themselves in, um, and developing within. One of the things I want to say about child and youth care is that our focus is specific to that child. The child is, is the center of our, we take an ecological systems of theory approach, um, and you will learn about that through your education in CYC practice, uh, where the child is the focus and their many systems have a great impact on them. And so we maintain focus um, as the client in our um, advocacy and the work that we do with young people. So what is child and youth care? We are a profession that works with children, youth and their families. We have multiple domains in where we work. As I spoke earlier, we work in places like hospitals, schools, residential programs. Uh, those can include shelters. Um, they can inc include a, um, a day treatment program, a foster care system. Uh, youth justice homes, crisis units. We do outreach in our communities. We work with children and youth with social, emotional, and behavioral challenges. So there's typically a level of risk in their behaviors and in their attitudes that we would be working with. Using a relational framework, we work in the moment and the life and in the life space. So we would take whatever interactions that we are dealing with in the moment and utilize that as an opportunity for intervention. Um, an example I can give to that is, is something as simple as training a young person on how to um, budget their, their money by doing going out grocery shopping with them on a day-to-day -day basis and having them learn how to budget their funds. Um, this is working within their life space and working within the moment of child and youth care practice. So who are the young people that we work with? Um, we can be working in all kinds of realms. And so our position as CYC practitioners 
are about supporting and doing mentorship for the young people that we work with. And our varying sectors, child welfare, uh, would be something like children's aid societies, group homes, foster care systems that we might work within um, their 24 hour services. We have mental health programming, things like eating uh, disorder clinics, crisis units, distress centers. There's private practices that we could be working within. We also work within programs like youth employment, um, supporting youth in the de their development in their education as well as their development in their careers, um, learning the appropriate attire, learning interviewing skills, helping them with job search, uh, finding employment to build their skills. We have, um, we also work within the youth justice system. We might work in places like secure custody, detention centers, open custody facilities. We may work with probation officers, officers or help young people in our communities who are on probation. Um, this can be done through outreach work and there's a connection between those two, as you can see. We also work with those who have developmental disabilities. We may strive to educate ourselves further in developmental disabilities, education and awareness, research and understanding, um, and help to um, our young people who are experiencing developmental dif disabilities, how to navigate systems, get through our education systems, uh, work through varying programs. We also work within our education systems, which is a popular uh, area for people to want to work within. Uh, people wish to work within the school boards, uh, Section 27 classrooms, after school programs, social skills groups. One thing child and youth care practitioners do is a lot of group work, and I think that's important to note. Um, it's really uh, impactful when we can do education and group work together and impact numbers of children, of children and youth at the same time. So a little, bit about, a little bit about the CYC 133 uh, program overview. This is a full-time three-year program at George Brown uh, that runs from September to April over three years or over six semesters, okay? Um, upon successful completion, you will have received your advanced diploma in child and youth care. And so each year, um, what you're looking at here are your semesters broken down. So this slide is your first year uh, from September, se September to April of what courses you would be taking. So in semester one, we are looking at starting the beginning of September and finishing at the end of December. You will take these five courses, Introduction to Child and Youth Care, Interpersonal Communication, Indigenous Studies, College Education, and one general education elective um, that you would choose from, from our Gen Ed um, department. Um, again, you're running a probably 14 to 15 week um, education is your semester. Okay, and in semester two, which runs from January to, uh, sorry, January to April, we run uh, first years attend field prep seminar classes. Um, and this is preparing you for field work in your second year. You will attend a program, uh, a course called Therapeutic Activities. We have another course called Equity, Inclusion and Anti-Oppressive Practices. Legislation and Social Issues, Child and Adolescent Development. Uh, and these five courses are in the winter semester. Um, we also know that sometimes people, that may be a little bit too much. Some people may be able to carry extra courses. So you have the ability to communicate with your coordinators to discuss um, taking a course if you need to drop or add something to your uh, course class list, okay? So this is your first year. These are core courses that you would need to attend um, in order to move forward into your second year, okay? 
In year two, we look at semester three, which is running from September to December. You will have these four courses. You have counseling, children and youth. You have professional writing in CYC. You have field practice, uh, which is two days per week while you are being educated over the next three days of the week. And then you will have field work seminar. Um, please note that field practice and field work seminar are co-requisites. You cannot do one without the other. So if you are in field practice, you will have to attend field seminar. And these two are mandatory attendance courses, um, which require a 60% pass in order for you to move forward into your second field practice. Okay. That field practice is something that happens for the duration of your second year. So you will attend field placement for two days per week from September all the way to April. In semester four, which is second year and your winter semester, the following courses are being delivered. You have trauma-informed approaches, human sexuality, group work in CYC practice, and again, you would be attending your field practice as well as your field work seminar classes, which is a continuation from your winter semester. Um, okay, and in your third year at the program, first semester from September to December, you will take your crisis prevention intervention course. This is actually a weekend course done over, I think, four days or three days from either a Thursday to a Sunday or a Friday to a Sunday where students are expected to and have paid for attending this course but need to find um, an appropriate time. I think you have two weekends to choose from where you can make a decision to take the course during that weekend. Um, then you have your community-based practices, uh, your working with families, mental health one, and your field practice along with your field work seminar class, um, which also those two will run for the duration of the, of the school year. In semester six, your winter semester of your third year, you have a course called Critical Issues in CYC, and that will be uh, trending topics of discussion that will be presented in a class over a 14-week period. You have Mental Health too. You also uh, will continue on with your field practice as well as your field work seminar classes. Um, in this semester, you will complete and finish a general elective, um, education elective, uh, for the course, and that will provide you with your ability to graduate. So just to go back to your field practice opportunities, we have two opportunities. So we have field practice one and field practice two. Field practice one starts in your second year, first um, second year, semester three and you are attending two days a week as discussed earlier while you are doing academics three days per week in your third year of the cyc program here you have your second field practice opportunity as long as you have successfully completed your first field practice you will move into your second field practice to do three days per week and then be in classes for only two days per week. Okay. In field practice, the passing grade and seminar classes, the passing grade is a 60%, which is a C minus. You must have achieved the, um, a field preparation seminar and all required paperwork must be completed by the stated deadlines to be eligible to pass, okay? Students are matched at their placement to a placement opportunity based on the availability and their skill level. 
We do our best to accommodate uh, placement preferences, but there's never any real guarantee that you will get that. Uh, we have so many students coming in here, um, and we have so many people with such different skill levels. So matching, even though we do our best to match, it's not always guaranteed. So our coursework, uh, classes and assignments are highly part participatory participatory. Uh, whether we are doing classes in the classroom on campus or we are doing classes online with students in this fashion, um, all classes in, are really encouraging of dialogue and participation and involvement, whether that's through small group activities, conversations, breakout groups, um, having guest lectures or doing some type of experiential learning. Uh, we anticipate that students are um, active in their in, in their education and their learning experience. So you must pass all the courses outlined here earlier uh, to graduate in our program. The passing grade for most of those courses are a 50%. Anything that has to do with field and field placement uh, or field-related classes, you need a 60% for. So field prep seminar, seminar classes throughout the three, uh, the six semesters, um, and your field practice itself all require a C minus or a 60% in order for you to move forward into um, your next field. Courses include both individual and group work. Assignments can include things like professional, uh, sorry, personal reflections, um, looking at completing a research paper, uh, in-class projects and presentations. You will be given things like quizzes, tests, and group assignments to complete. And just a note that due to COVID-19 safety protocols, we anticipate many or most classes to be delivered remotely or through a combination of in-person and remote delivery. Okay. So at George Brown, we have so many student supports in place for our students. And uh, given our situation with COVID and not being on campus, many people think that those um, student supports are not available. This is not true. All of our student supports are still available to you. And I'm going to give you a little breakdown of what we actually um, provide for you. But let me just read this. The CYC program trains to work with young people facing significant challenges in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, this work can be difficult. And I think we also need to think about when we are working in this field, we have to think about a level of self-care. So taking care of ourselves, seeking out those student supports. Uh, we, we, as professors, uh, your faculty truly encourage you to utilize the support systems that are in place at the college. Okay. So some of our student supports um, are as follows. We have something called the Student Success Peer Leaders. Those peer leaders will meet with you, connect with you, support you with some of your educational needs, your needs uh, on campus, uh, navigating some of the things within our community, our GBC community. We have a counseling service that is located on the fifth floor. You can access through them, them through online services as well as through telephone conversation as well. We also have accessible learning needs. This is also uh, learning services. Uh, learning accommodations, physically located on the campus on our second floor. Um, and you can call in or go online to their webpage and go directly to them to check if you qualify for any learning accommodation needs. Uh, you may or may not have had an IEP in your previous education and might need some supports and services to go into place. And accessible learning um, is the services that you would um, access in order to get those needs met and dealt with. And we highly encourage students to access them when required. Okay. We have the TLC, what's called the Tutoring and Learning Center, on the fourth floor of our college, um, within the CYC hallway, actually. Um, 
they're located and they provide tutoring and are a learning center to help people kind of do things like editing, review some of their um, assignments, do some tutoring with some students around any topical areas. Uh, they're also available to you online. Um, one of my favorite services that we have is our library workshops. We have a librarian specific to our CYC um, program who Sarah Weeb, who she um, is so supportive with our students who reach out to her and ask for some support, maybe looking for specific library academic um, resources, references, uh, research papers, articles. And Sarah is fantastic at doing that. We have a really great library that I think people should really um, take the opportunity to utilize. Great resources. Lots of online learning supports that you can access through uh, both the library and GBC websites. Uh, we have things like housing programming, food banks. We have a great career support service uh, located in the basement of our college, uh, but are accessible online as well. And then the, uh, the other thing that I want to inform people about is our student association, which is specific to student advocacy. So you can access your student association if you need some support and help with, in navigating or dealing with some type of advocacy on campus um, in your educational um, career. Okay. All of those can be found on the web page through the search bar. Type in anything that you see here and it will come up on our web page. So what are our admissions requirements? If you are interested in participating in the CYC program and think that this is um, a career path for you, you are required to have your Ontario um, OSSD, your Ontario Secondary School Diploma, or an equivalent. Your grade, or you also need a grade 12 English or a minimum of 65% required of your um, college or English university. Sorry, college or university um, English. Okay. Other admission requirements to think about. Mature students who are 19 years and older uh, may take the admissions assessment for English or they may upgrade and achieve their credits needed in English. Uh, volunteer experience is so highly recommended in this, in this program. Um, anything that you are doing working with children, youth and families are an asset to your experience coming into this program. So anything that you can do prior to that would be, uh, prior to coming in would be fantastic. The CYC program is approved for OSAP funding. So students are eligible to, to, um, to, apply for OSAP fund funding and be provided um, OSAP funding if they are eligible. Uh, so please take a look at that. You can also go through the George Brown website and take a look at uh, how to access funding. If you wish to apply to our child and youth care program here at George Brown College, our program co code is C133. I'm hoping that we get to see many of you and that you're interested. Love to see you face to face, meet you online. Um, I really hope that uh, this is a path for you that you are passionate, feeling strongly about um, and that you are interested and we look forward to seeing you in our classes. Uh, a couple things you may want to know. Our program coordinators, we have Zelina Mohammed and Judy Masters, and this is their email addresses. You can email either of them with any questions that you might have. I look forward to meeting every last one of you and um, supporting your education in child and youth care practice. Looking forward to witnessing, learning, and um, getting to know all of you and being passionate about working in this field. Thank you so much for your um, time. Have a great day.